Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. just the right opportunity and the right project that they need to get into and you know, everything was okay. I would like to find out from you, what is your general assessment of Nollywood? Look, Nollywood is still a growing industry. It's we're fairly young. And don't forget that there's not a lot of money here. People, the finance sector does not, and the banking sector, they don't understand this. I mean, if there's sugar, yeah, the guy knows that, all right, so you sell that sugar and it becomes blah, blah, blah. If he's not selling, they can hold the sugar, they can hold the cement. This is intellectual property. This is, they, they look at it like, so how do you guys make money? And then suddenly they will now say, wow, Big Daddy made this, yeah, that one made that, ha, and that's your thing, and blah, blah, blah. So look, it's... Um, I believe strongly that it's a growth is a growth process. You look, Hollywood, Hollywood also did that. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, it's a process. Same thing with Bollywood. We're not doing badly. Let's get real. For the kind of budgets that we operate, we're not doing bad. Uh, we're not doing badly. So let people be patient. The audience will always determine what's going to happen. The time there was. It was all the horror things that people wanted to see then, the love things. And it's not peculiar to hear. So let everybody just calm down. The audience will keep determining where Nollywood will go. It is for us to just get better and better at our game. And believe me, honest, the quality of projects uh, now, you can't compare them with what yeah, things were here. Yeah, the, the fascination for moving yeah. pictures and stuff. What took you it? How did it start? <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> but I, I, I think they, my parents took us to watch Ten Commandments. That was the very first film. I love a cinema. And 
thereafter, I would, I would sleep with an uncle to go and watch Indian movies, and, and then it, it just started to get into like, oh, oh, this goodness. <laughs> Not that I could do it. You never even knew you could do it. It was just a fascinated one. Uh, the stunts they would do, the music, the moving. So by the time one was a teenager, uh, I was already writing. I was already writing. I mean, I mean from about form two or something. And especially by the time one was on, like in form three, the people could not understand. Like, are you sure? Are you sure you wrote this? I would write things that would be very adult in nature. And that, that. So in school, they would be passing the exercise book all over the place. Like, oh, really? So they start to discuss it, and you know, this fires off something in you. And uh, getting into getting into production, uh, my father used to have one uncle called David O'Reilly. Yes, uh, those are the early days uh, uh, producers. Colleagues of the Uncle Tunde, you know, so he used to be my dad's tenant. So when he's got small things to do for kids, he take myself and my brother. Yeah, yeah, read this before we get there. Or read this before. And you know that time is not. You can't record a cop. Record a cop. That's a stretch. You know, and I I think my bit of directing comes from watching the man in control of so many activities at the same time. I mean, multi cameras in, in the studio. There seem to be so many screens and these big gadgets that will get to the better than you know, the visual mixer. And he's the one controlling everything. And it just like, fascinated me beyond words. You know, he put me, the very first thing they ever put me in, the wrong play of the week thing, that Mary and I'll give you. Very giant, all those very troubles on my bones, you know. So they put, I was meant to be selling ground up. So when it was my cue, they pushed me onto the set. And we had rehearsed this quite a few times. So anyway, we were done, and then I came out, and then the floor manager was being, What is it? What was it was talking about? I said, Of course, I said. So when those like when those like boss came, said, what's wrong with you? You didn't say your lines. So they were meant to have asked me how much is your, your ground not and so they were saying when I didn't answer, we will be taking the thing. <laughs> we did be, they would prompt me. My I, I blanked out. And for me that took, that must have taken me away from the front of the camera for life. But I enjoyed the back. I enjoyed you know, you're able to can celebrate and appreciate. You can't quantify that. So what would you say has kept you in ever since that first romance in quotes with moving pictures? What has kept me going? The passion for this. You know, there are so many stories waiting to be told. And sometimes the scale is so huge, you say, all right, let's leave it for a while. It's the passion and, you know, people are so impressed with what you do. You want to do more. That, that's, that's what the passion is. Okay, let me take the final question on T. When some people want to relax, they watch your movies. When you want to relax, what do you do? I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to socialize now. <laughs> I don't know how to chase babes. I don't know to... So uh, look, I, I, my, my, what I enjoy to do, I, I, I like to go to the beach. Sometimes alone, sometimes in the company of friends. Uh, those are usual kind of things. Those are the kind of things. I, you're not able to do such all the time. So my quiet moments, I'm an indoor person. And if I go outdoors, I go to theaters abroad. I'm one that can just jump onto a flight and I want to go and watch a show in New York or something. Because one learns from some of all those things, like wow, well, look at the technicality of this. And it's not just, it's not movies now, I'm talking about live, live projects where you're wondering, hmm, how do they achieve that? How do they do that? That's how I relax, really. Uncle T, you've done so many works. 
Mm. Of all of them. I don't think which so. Which one <laughs> gives you which one gives you the greatest job? All of them. No, I need one. All of them. I don't want to believe this one gives me a lot of joy. Uh, the way everybody's come together to make a statement with us. And for the older ones, the scale of some of those things we did then, you know, when you even look at them now, it's like, wow, you did this where there was nothing, when you need to have the right technology to tell this kind of stories. So I, it's difficult to pinpoint one, but I think gold statue is going to be. Finally, how do you see yourself? How would you describe yourself? I'm darker than Azul. <laughs> uh, I don't have a publishing. <laughs> I don't have, I'm not a publisher. Oh, I, <laughs> I, 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 I speak Yoruba. Azul pretends to Do try speak. to speak Yoruba. Where he says, Kusi problem. Kusi ah, problem. I know only the problem. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome.